it's not just vulnerability for vulnerability's sake. It's not just honest real talk for honest real talk's sake. This is this is a process of sanctification, if I can use that word. Like the yeah. goal is 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 holiness. The goal is to be more like Jesus. And we do that in connection and in community with other people. Um and so it's not just like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna share this very real hard thing that's going on in my life. And then I'm just going to like stop doing that, but not, you know, nothing else is going to change about my life. This is like an ongoing process of, of growth. And uh, so, you know, I think the love of the people in our life and the love of God meets us where we are, but it doesn't leave us where we are. You know, I've heard people say that before. It moves us from where we are to a place of holiness and health and um, a place of like being in the light. What's up, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Trevor Talks. I'm your host, Trevor Tyson, and I'm so thrilled that you're here with us today for our first episode of 2023. I'm super pumped for this new year of just having conversations that I believe are going to be inspiring and just meeting people where they're at. That's exactly where we need to be, and I feel like that's the direction we need to go for in this year. So thank you so much for joining us for another year of what I believe is going to be some amazing conversations. This episode is brought to you by our amazing sponsors at Life Audio. So special shout out to them. If you're looking for some new podcasts to go binge through, be sure to go to lifeaudio.com and uh, check them out. And today's guest is a very special guest. He joined us last year for a conversation about his life and his journey with passion and so many different things. And he's back for the first episode of 2023 to discuss a very vulnerable piece of his life. So I don't think you need another intro because we pretty much covered it, but we've got the poster boy of passion movement and worship leader, husband, father, and a real person with real stories. We've got Christian Stanfield back on the show. So Christian, welcome back. Man, it's good to be back. I love that. I love, I love uh, being a repeat, repeat guest on with you guys, man. This is awesome. Love well, it's almost you. like we get to build some uh, repertoire, you know. I was looking around the house today for uh, those slap bracelets that you were selling back in like 2012 because <laughs> yeah. I bought like nine of them because you could like interchange the colors. I was like, I don't know where that, right. but I couldn't find it. But it's around here somewhere, yeah. and I will find it. Those it's were amazing. a big hit with my kids too. My my son actually brought those up a few days ago. Uh, he's like, Dad, remember those slap bracelets? Like, yeah, those things were banging, dude. Like they I had a different banging, man. like. It was back in the day where you had those big block t-shirts that said like yellow and everything on them. And I was like, I got to yeah. have one to match every single shirt at yeah. Super Wow. So <laughs> did that. And it, the white one even has your like a uh, signature very faded on it. So it's just a good time all around. Wow. Wow. That is fantastic, man. The, I, that, we should we should try and bring back the slap bracelet thing because that was quite a movement. And uh, I feel like it should it you, could take off again. I don't you know, think it maybe? would? I don't, know. I don't know. I feel like I, I could ask my son. My my son is 16 and I have a 13 year old daughter. They would both have their finger on the pulse of like, yeah, that, that could maybe hit again. I don't know. We'll see. Call, just call your homie Trent Jackson. He'll let you know real quick if it's going to work or not. But, Trent would know. <laughs> like, mm, yeah, he would know. But man. He'd be like pass, hard pass. <laughs> just a hard pass. You can't hard print pass. that. Come on now. Yeah. But it's super interesting to circle back almost a year later and talk about Something that we didn't touch on in the last episode because mm -hmm. you hadn't begun to speak about it yet. Um, but on November 9th of this past year, you posted on Instagram just a very simple screenshot and it said two years sober. And I had to like read it a few times because I was like, it's the same guy, like the Christian mm -hmm. sample, like it. You don't put those two together. So it was like, for me, it was like, dang, like he's a real dude. Like he's going through some real stuff. And good for you for opening up about it. So, like, I'm just grateful to be able to circle back and talk about something super meaningful. The last time it was about your story, how my story kind of intertwined with uh, passion and what you're doing there. And this year we get to talk about something super deep and vulnerable that I believe that a lot of people struggle with mm -hmm. and don't necessarily let it meet the surface out of fear and vulnerability. So with that being said, I really want to start off with talking about Make It Out Alive, which is a very vulnerable message, uh, nor the less a record. Um, so when you hear the words Make It Out Alive, whether it's about the record, about the lyrics, about your personal journey, where do you want to start with that? Because I don't want to make this solely about the music. I want this to be about the movement behind the music as well. Mm -hmm. So 
wherever you want to start with that, make it out alive. Oh man. I love that, man. Thank you for wanting to talk about this stuff. I think it's important for us to talk about, um, well, you know, the, the, the record, make it out alive and the message behind it, it's all the same thing. Um, you know, I wrote these songs, um, on my recovery journey. So, you know, November 9th, 2022, you know, posted two years sober. Um, there was a lot that led up to that post, you know, it's been quite a, quite a journey, um, trying to understand addiction in my life, uh, where it comes from, um, how, how I interact with it and, um, and really just facing down some stuff in my life that was really hard to really hard to look at and face down. And in the process of doing that work with, you know, counselors and really close friends. And of course, you know, my wife and I hand in hand through it all. Um, I started writing these songs. And so really the, you know, the sobriety piece and that, that process and the music, it's all, it's all interwoven. It's all, all in there together. Um, but the message of make it out alive, you know, that song is very autobiographical. The record as a whole is very autobiographical. Um, but I believe that the message is universal. I think everybody, you know, this is based on personal experience. I've talked to a lot of people um, about, you know, this kind of stuff. And everybody's struggling with something, some kind of brokenness in their life. And um, and I wanted, I wanted to communicate through this record that, you know, no matter how how low you get, no matter how dark it gets, no matter how hard the moment is, um, you're going to make it out alive. You know, one step at a time, one day at a time, you're going to make it out alive. And that, that was what I needed to hear on that day. You know, November 9th, 2020, I needed someone to say to me like, Hey, I know you can't really see a way out from here. You can't see a way up from here, but one day you're going to look back on this day and it's going to be different. You're going to be in a better place. You're going to be healthy. Um, you're going to be you know, moving in the right direction. Um, I needed somebody to tell me that on that day. And so I'm just hoping that these songs can, can reach someone at that point. They could hear it and go, all right, well, you know, if Christian was there, but he's not there anymore, he, now he's on higher ground and he's in the light and, things are better, not perfect. <laughs> things are not perfect. <laughs> things are very real. It's, it's a gnarly ride we're on. Um, things are not easy or perfect, but, um, they're honest and, and true. And so I think, um, that that's the message of make it out alive. And that's what I hope people take away from it. That's so good. And it is meeting people where they're at mm. and, well, speaking of November 9th, 2020, if you're comfortable sharing, what are some of the things that led up to you having to have these hard conversations with people you love? Um, mm. Those are often the hardest to have. I've yeah. noticed personally, it's so easy to hop on a stage with a microphone and talk about like, oh, I've been through anxiety and depression and this and that and the people you don't quite know. But when you have to have those face to face conversations with your spouse, with your family, with your best friend slash pastor, like that gets a little tricky, especially when you have a platform and you have children, like it had to be a hard thing to do. It was definitely tough. Um, I think leading up to that, that day, um, it just became increasingly clear to my wife that I was not okay. I wasn't healthy. Um, and she, called my two best friends and they came over to my house one night after I'd put my kids to bed and we sat in my front yard and they basically said, all right, bro, um, no BS, man. You got to tell us what's really going on and we're not going to leave here without a plan. Essentially what they were saying and what they did say was we love you too much to let you stay the same. You got to change, man. We got to, we got to grow. We got to go up from here. And, um, and so that was really the beginning of the process for me. You know, I went away from that conversation. Um, I called Louie, um, and Shelly, um, just a couple days after that. 
and we just started making a plan man and it it the priority was just getting healthy and so um i ended up at a counseling intensive in tennessee called onsite Come and on. i spent spent a week there um you know you when you go to something like that you think you're going to talk about you know the addiction piece or talk about like this topical like here's the reason i'm i'm here but what you end up talking about is all the stuff that's like way underneath all of that that that's actually you know affecting what's what's going on in your life so there's all this all this stuff that i had to sort through you know um and it was again just very very hard work um but worth it it was so so worth it it's good work to do but it is it's very hard you know and emotionally it it, it takes a lot out of you even physically but i came home from that week with just real understanding i think the most important thing i learned while i was there is that i'm not alone and i think that's the lie that we believe a lot of us for so long is that i'm the only one struggling with this issue whatever it is i'm the only one who's broken in this way and so we project an image of health but on the inside we're we're sick because we don't feel like we have the freedom to say this is what i'm dealing with but what i learned at onsite is actually there's i'm i'm just like everybody on planet earth <laughs> everybody is broken and everybody uh, needs people everybody needs community um, so i came home from that man just uh honestly it changed my life and i you know i'm two years removed from from that day you know two years from that day almost but um it changed my life and gave me new tools gave me new language it gave me a new perspective on community and connection with other people and um i'm still living in the in the in the you know overflow of of that week so no, but you're right, man. Just to, to what you're saying, it they're not easy conversations. Um, it wasn't it wasn't easy to go there with my friends. It wasn't easy to go there with my wife. It's not easy to go there with my pastor because I mean that that's tough stuff to bring out and say like, here's the truth. Um, but what I found, man, almost instantaneously, was a tremendous amount of grace and a tremendous amount of love from the people that are in my life. Um, it was immediately like, okay, we're going to figure this out. We're in your corner, man. We, we're going to make a plan as, as your, as your community and your family. Um, so I think that's the other lie that we believe is if we come out with this stuff, there's going to be this, like, you did what you, you're what, what do you what's wrong with you? You've got this thing going, like, how dare you? And just shame, 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 shame. Um, that's what the enemy, that's what hell wants us to believe is going to happen if we come out into the light with this stuff. But really, I found the opposite to be true when I, when I really got honest with the people in my life that I trusted, people in my life that I knew were in my corner, man, they, they responded with so much love and grace and, um, I think sometimes that's the barrier to entry for a lot of people is they're like, yeah, no, man, I think, I think I'm just going to keep it to myself. Um, but my encouragement would be get it out, talk about it. There's so much healing on the other side of it. Yeah. And it's so hard to think about like when you have one of those mountains in front of you, that's all you can see. You can't see your friends on the other side telling you like, come on, come on, there's freedom, there's freedom. You can get mm -hmm. past this. And that is a lie. And especially like cancel culture and all these things are running rampant right now. Mm -hmm. And I have never said this, but like everybody aspires for these like verification check marks and uh, fame and all these things in the world. But to a certain extent, especially when you're a person of faith, that can become a prison mentally because all of your things that you're ashamed of, all of the things that you don't want people to know become something that you're hiding from every single person, not just your close people, but the people that mm. you're influencing. Did you find that to become an obstacle in your journey of like, I'm a, I'm a worship leader. Like I can't talk about this because I'm going to worship leading is a lifestyle. Yes. But it's also a source of income for some, a job. 
mm-hmm. it's hard to talk about. Um, did you find that to be, be an obstacle in the journey for you? Um, I think maybe at first, I think maybe that's why it took me two years to say, like, you know, to come out on November 9th and go, Hey, I'm, I'm two years sober today. Um, part of that was because we were, we were still like in process for a while. You know, it wasn't really about even a number of days or sobriety. It was more about just like trying to change our lifestyle. You know, that's part of it. I think the other part of it is that you're right. Like it, it's not the norm for, you know, people on a platform or people in leadership to talk about their, their struggles openly. But to be honest, man, the deeper I got into the recovery world and the deeper I got into, you know, community and connection with guys who were, you know, um, trying to get healthy and kick some of this stuff out of their life, the more I realized that, man, the, the honest conversations are actually happening everywhere. Like I found, I found circles and communities all over the place that were, they're just like having these conversations about addiction and sobriety and, um, and it's not a big deal, but it, it felt like a big deal in the church, you know? (laughs) So when we came out with it, it was almost like, this is just part of the normal flow of our life. Like, this is just how we talk. This is just how I talk now. You know, it's how we all, we all talk about this stuff now, just very normally. Um, and so when I posted that, I to be, to be perfectly honest, this is the honest truth. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I thought I'll put it out there and I thought I'm going to help somebody else get honest. Like that, that was, that was the big thing for me is I'd been quiet about it for so long But what I learned is that when other people would talk about their journey or their recovery, it actually encouraged me in my, in my process. And so it got to the point where I was like, man, I feel like if I could be honest, like it could actually help somebody else. And then we we help each other. So when I posted that, man, I wasn't really thinking like this was, you know, this, it wasn't like a big deal to me and my wife. I talked to my wife before I posted, I talked to Louie and Shelly. I talked to, um, uh, Rachel, who uh, works at our, you know, she's part of our, our Six Steps record label. Um, she's been in the process with my wife and I. So I talked to these people. I said, do we think this is a good idea? And so I, it wasn't like in a vacuum. I just decided like, sure. hey, I'm going to go do this. But we thought, yeah, I think this could be helpful. Um, so I uh, I also wanted to give some context for the music that was that was about to come out. Cause I, I think what started to happen is I, as I would talk about the record, as I would talk about make it out alive, people, I think it felt like, like there, something happened. I think people would say it like, they were like, I think something happened in their life, but we're not really sure yeah. what that is. And it got to the point where it was like, man, we, we just probably need to say this thing out loud, you know? And, um, and to give some context so when you hear these songs you go okay this is coming from a very like a very real place of brokenness but also a very real place of like restoration and and healing so um but yeah that what you're asking is very real and um but i I can say that overwhelmingly the reception uh, from that post or from the conversations i've had with people overwhelmingly it's been encouraging like people are i think over over overall what i felt is that people are ready for real talk they're ready for honest talk and um you know i i think that that's i think that's what people have connected to the most it's just the the vulnerability of it and going even if they don't struggle with you know alcohol or any kind of addiction mm-hmm. if there's something there in in everyone's life they're like thank you for being real that means that I can be real too about whatever it is. And there's so many songs and people out there that are searching for hope and just so many people out there struggling with finding that hope in the bottom of bottle or self-medicating marijuana, all these things that aren't going to fix the problem because you're going around it. You're not going to the core of it. So Mm. did you find a lot of power with being able to say like, you know what? I'm going to go to this camp. I'm going to go and learn. This isn't for songwriting. This isn't for my job. This is for healing. Um, 
this is what I need to do. There's a lot of power in taking ownership of it and realizing like, you know what? I can walk this thing out. I can get past this. Um, whether it stays private or goes public, like I need to get through this myself. Um, what was that mental battle for you? Um, I think, you know, we were at the point of a couple of years ago where nothing else really mattered. So I'm like, I work doesn't matter. I mean, you know, you understand what I mean? Like, yeah. it was like everything else needs to, needs to take a, a back seat to, to this process of getting healthy and getting, getting, getting better. And so going to, you know, on site, um, I was so, I was honestly, it was so happy. You know, you go there and they take your phone and you're completely disconnected from everything, email, text, family, friends. You have no idea what's going on in the outside world, no TV. And man, uh, you know, as soon as they, you put your phone in that bucket, it was like the anxiety level just like came way down <laughs> and, um, you, you know, it felt really, really good. And then, like I said, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a really taxing, you know, time to be there, but, um, yeah, I, I think that was the priority. It's just going there and getting real and, and, and getting to the bottom of what was really going on. So, yeah. And notice that most things that are really good for you and you walk away feeling super refreshed, they jack your phone from you. First thing you get there, they're like, Hey, yeah. give us that source of communication. I don't think humans were built for the level of communication that we have now, even doing calls like this, like we're able to have honest conversations. We're in the same state, but miles apart, like mm -hmm. we're able to have these conversations, but like Instagram being able to reach, uh, I don't know who the most influential person on the planet is. Like Elon Musk has like a hundred million followers or whatever on Twitter, right. which he's purchased. Praise God for him doing that. Um, <laughs> like everybody has so much access to influence and access yeah. to things that they want right now. And even with things that aren't good for you, like, um, pornography, like you mm -hmm. have a level of access to even order things that are terrible for you on the yeah. internet. And we weren't made for that. So no. crazy rabbit trail there, but like, uh, I'm glad that they took your phone because that had, to provide some sort of just, I'm not going to yeah. worry about anything else. For well, myself. it just it's forces beautiful. you to be present. Yeah, It forces you to be aware and in the moment. And I think that is what was so important for me while I was there is to focus on the work that we were there to do, connect with the other guys that were in my group. I formed some friendships there. You know, I'm, I'm still friends with these guys. Two years later, my roommate became one of my best friends. We talk every week. Um, another guy that was there, we talk off I mean, my whole group we have a group text you know these are relationships that that formed this week you know in that week and um with a phone there you know i i don't know it's it, it forces you to be present and in the moment you know um, look people in the eye and go i have nowhere else to be i have nothing else to look at i'm just i'm just looking at you and i'm listening to you and uh we're all doing the same work so yeah and along the way, when it came to healing, like mm. we all make mistakes. We all like have uh, withdrawals or relapses. How did you hold yourself accountable to, and keep from beating yourself up on the journey to recovery? That's a great question. Um, for me, it took real intentionality. Um, I had to plan for connection, which I don't plan very well. I'm very like instinctual. Like I, I kind of like... Uh, I'm not real good at like putting things on the calendar. Me <laughs> neither, talking, man. We're talking today. We like set this up and we did it. So I'm proud we of us. We did it. We uh, had some help. But yeah, um, we did. <laughs> Shout out to Merge. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you, Merge. But um, uh, what I've learned is I have to plan for connection. So every Tuesday at 8 a.m., I connect with my two best friends, the same best friends that sat me down in my front yard a couple years ago. Every Wednesday at 1.30, I have a conversation with my roommate from on-site. His name's Isaac. Um, every Thursday morning, I have a conversation with another guy. So it's just these conversations and connections with people. And then throughout you know, the week, I'm having coffees and lunches with, with people and trying to, to get below the surface with, with people on our team here in Atlanta. And so 
as I do that, I'm just reminded, A, that I'm not alone. I'm, I'm, I've got people in my corner. We're all in this, this fight together. We're all journeying together. Um, and then B, it just reminds me that, you know, this is the work. This is the process that we're in. Um, and, you know, I, I should say, you know, while we're talking about this part of it, that, you know, it's, it's not just vulnerability for vulnerability's sake. It's not just honest, real talk for honest, real talk's sake. This, this is a process of sanctification, if I can use that word. Like the yeah. goal is, is, is holiness. The goal is to be more like Jesus. And we do that in connection and in community with other people. Um, and so it's not just like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this very real hard thing that's going on in my life. And then I'm just going to like stop doing that, but not, you know, nothing else is going to change about my life. This is like an ongoing process of, of growth. And uh, so you know, I think the love of the people in our life and the love of God meets us where we are, but it doesn't leave us where we are. You know, I've heard people say that before. It moves us from where we are to a place of holiness and health and um, a place of like being in the light. So that's that's the goal of all of that yeah and this is like the tricky part for me because i wanted to just map out all the lyrics on the record but mm. i wanted to talk about the song we need people in general um the mm. highs are a little bit higher the lows make a little more sense when you got someone in your corner that you know um, you can live it with life set, life is complicated and our pride says we can make it on our own but the truth is simple we need people yeah. It's a memoir of healing, mm -hmm. obviously, but showcasing the power of having community around you to be vulnerable with them first and not for the sake of being vulnerable, but just to heal through it, to put those things into light to where the darkness can flee from it. Mm -hmm. Um you've kind of already explained like the purpose of the song, but do you remember when this concept came in your head and you were just trying to make it into something or what did that look like? Well, that song actually was the last song that I finished for the project. So we thought we had finished the record. Um, Jason Ingram uh, produced the record and I had been in his house and we'd, we'd finished, I think we had 10 songs or, or 10, 10 tracks done. And Jason was like, Hey man, like this might be it. Like we might be done. Like you should go away from this and think about like, this might be finished. And, um, and so I went away from there and I just had a feeling. I was like, I think there's one more song and I didn't know what it was. And, uh, so I started digging through voice memos and lyrics from, you know, and I stumbled on this, uh, this chorus idea, uh, for we need people. And I was like, this is the piece that's missing to sing about, like just to come out and, and write out and sing about the power of connection and the power of community. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm singing in that song. I, I wrote those, that song with very specific people in mind. I mean, they're very specific people in our life that have journeyed from day one all the way to today. Um, and, and so, but I think it connects again, it's a universal message. You know, I think we all can relate to that lyric, what you just said, you know, um, I, and, you know, part of the message of that song is that it's not just the highs, but it's also the lows. So we, we want to live on the, on the high. That's easier. It's better. It's more fun <laughs> to go. Things are great. And it's just a celebration. Like that's fun, but that's, that's not life. That's not the full picture of life. Life is also full of lows. And when you can celebrate with people, in the high, but also cry with people at the low. That's when you know you've got some real community and some real roots going down deep with people. Um, and you know, it, this process of healing doesn't happen if we don't have these people. If Carrie and I don't have these people in our life, like we wouldn't be where we are today. So that was a really important message to uh, have on the project, and. Um, that, that was the last, the very last song. And, um, I'm really glad that we, we added it. I think it, I think it rounds it out really nicely. 
it did round it out perfectly. And man, you hadn't put out a solo record since 2011. And mm. what a way to come back from that. Obviously, mm. you've put music out with passion and stuff, but this is you. This, these are your words. These are your experiences. These are your yeah. stories. Um, this is an anthem for people that are hurting and broken and want to recover and that actually mm. want to make it out alive. So yeah. if someone's out there beginning that journey of recovery, or maybe they listen to this and they realize that they have a problem that they need to overcome, uh, what would a first step or a piece of advice be from Christian Stample? <sighs> Man, I just got emotional when you asked me that question. I just remember being at that point, man. And I think I'll just say that, uh, you know, it's God's mercy to let, to let us fall sometimes and feel the consequences of our sin. It's also God's mercy to deliver us. I also think it's God's mercy that like, I can remember how I felt on that day, like what, what you're talking about. Like, I remember how, how bad it felt. And, um, so I would just say to anybody in that, in that place today, I would just encourage you to pick up the phone and call somebody like, just, just pick one person and just call them up or drive to their house or have them come over and just take a chance and, and open up to somebody and tell and tell them what's going on. Maybe you need to call a professional. You know, I don't know how I don't know how deep how deep it goes for you, but that would be the first step is to um to call somebody and open up. Um and then, you know, I would I would say do whatever it takes. You know, go I I went to on site and that felt like a really dress a, a really um um dramatic step for me at the time. I was really nervous about looking back on it. It seems funny to say that because now I want to go every year. <laughs> I'm like, this, this is an amazing place. But going, looking back, it was a pretty dramatic step to like carve the time out of our life, pay, pay what it costs to go do something like on site, and, and do that work. That felt like a dramatic step, but it, I knew that if I knew I, that's what I had to do. So I would say, whatever you have to do, do whatever it takes. Um, pause everything else in your life. If you can pause what you can and get the help that you need. Um, that would be a, yeah, a really big, a big part of it too. So just call somebody that, you know, you can trust with the information and then just do, do whatever it takes. Um, and then, you know, my prayer for people would be courage because it takes a lot of courage to wake up every day and keep, keep walking one step at a time, one day at a time. Um, just, it takes that courage to believe that I, if I keep walking in this direction, I'm going to end up somewhere better than where I am today. I'm going to, I'm going to get better with that, with the help of other people. Um, there's this, you know, thing we, we talked about a lot at onsite was this two degree shift. You know, you make these small two degree shifts, but over time, you end up in a completely different place. And sometimes it just takes that phone call or that, you know, dramatic thing, you know, going and getting help, that two degree shift, just, it changes the trajectory of your life. So that would be my encouragement to people, man. And so good. Make it out alive is now streaming on all major streaming platforms. Christian, this conversation and this record are both just, full of encouragement and hope mm. and i'm just thrilled to be able to help steward this message um with you and for the people that are listening if you are struggling and you need extra help we want to encourage you uh, to go check out our friends at heart support um, mm. death to life beneath the skin crisis text line if you're in need yeah. of like immediate help or in danger there's so many people out there that want to help you and if you don't have a person to call like reach out on some of these support forms. I know that Death to Life uh, and Heart Support have 24-7 text lines to where you can receive help. Um, you are loved. You have so much purpose. And I really just want to end this thing the only way I know how. And it's with some lyrics from Make It Out Alive. It's going to take some time. Healing always does. Embrace the road you're walking. Be patient with the process. 
you're going to make it out alive. Yeah. Talk to you guys next week.